Welcome to the Mount Gale Missionary Baptist Church, number 8 Brennan Drive, Conway, Arkansas, where Reverend 4C Cooper is the pastor. Happy Valentine's Day. Remember, John 316, for God so loved the world, he gave his only son. Let's not forget to show love to everyone, not just today, but every day. Vision casting meeting scheduled for Wednesday, February 17th has been postponed due to the projected weather forecast. Application for the AABE Arkansas Chapter Scholarships are being taken. Interested students have until March 7, 2021 to apply. Go to scholarship.aabe.org. Thank you for joining our virtual services every each Wednesday night at 7 p.m. and Sunday morning at 11 a.m. on YouTube and Facebook. We are a church where everybody is somebody and Christ is all. We want to encourage you to stay safe by the three W's, washing your hands, wearing your mask, and watching your distance. Be blessed as we prepare for the word on today. Oh, 
everyone. Thank God for the privilege of worship on today. Again, we thank God for being in your presence. We thank God for you tuning in to worship with us via your media, media, whatever your choice, Facebook, YouTube. We thank God for the privilege of worship. Again, <clears throat> we have to attest to the fact God is good and he has blessed us to see another day. I will rejoice in the Lord. Paul says, I rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. No matter what you're facing these days, no matter what you're going through, you need to make sure that you find the time to intentionally uh, rejoice in the Lord. For he's still God. He's worthy to be praised. Psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Praise shall continually be in my mind. No matter what the times may bring, I will bless the Lord, bless the Lord at all times. No matter what we are experiencing, I will bless the Lord at all times. That becomes a personal decision. And no matter what you go through, no matter what you're facing, God is still worthy of your praise. So bless his name today. I'm grateful to talk to you and share with you a message God laid on my heart. Uh, this time of year, we want to uh, look at a particular passage of scripture. Uh, your scripture will be found in the book of Exodus, chapter 3. Verses 7 through 9. While you're getting there, let's go down and pray. God, again, we thank you. We bless your name. We give you worship. We give you praise. We give you glory. We magnify your name. We lift up your name. Again, God, we tell you thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for your keeping power, your saving power, your delivering power. We just tell you thank you. And then God, ask now that you bless the word as it goes forth. Bless the body of Christ. You'll hear us. And bless someone to turn to you for salvation. Bless someone to turn to you a level of commitment. Bless someone to turn to you and become a disciple of your word and of your way. God, we thank you. We bless you. Anything that will hinder your work, we ask that you destroy. We ask that you heal, forgive, give direction, give counsel, give comfort, and give peace. And give purpose to each and every one of us. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. All the people say amen. Again, look at the book of Exodus, chapters 3, verses 7 through 9. And then we'll look in one particular verse in the book of Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 18, verse number 1. I'll be reading from the King James Version, Exodus, chapters 3, verses 7 through 9. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the afflictions of my people, which are in Egypt. I've heard their cry, and by reason of the taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, to bring them up out of the land unto a good land, a large and large, and to a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is and come unto me. I have, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. And then Luke, Gospel of Luke chapter 18, verse number one. Gospel of Luke chapter 18, verse number one. Very familiar passage, but we want to read it for your hearing. Gospel of Luke chapter 18, verse number one. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that man ought to always to pray and not to faint. Now I want to talk about for just a few minutes the work of prayer. The work of prayer. The simplicity of the text and the topic would make someone set at ease, saying, what must I hear again about the word of prayer? I wanted to share with you the power of prayer the process and the practice and the principles and the proof of prayer. Too many times we go with situations from a perspective which suggests that we have to do a lot of work. And work has its place in the faith walk. Faith without works is dead. But I want to talk about a power source that's unmatched called prayer. We must strive to make the best 
of life as a believer. No matter the times, no matter the race, no matter the culture, no matter the color or the ethnicity of a people. As believers in the body of Christ, we ought to make the best and the most of every moment God has blessed us with. Too often and in particular, in this calendar season, time of year, we begin to declare, defend, and distinctly explore, express, and elevate black history. The struggles of a people, the struggles of a nation, whether it be the nation of the Hebrews down in Egypt land, whether it be the nation of us as a people. And I, I don't want to relegate this to any particular person because truth be told, we're all pilgrims and travelers. This is not our home. So anything that you get in this life uh, can be a part of the struggle of life. What is black history? What is black life? All life matters. Yes, black life matter. I agree with it totally, but I want to go deeper to say that all souls matter to the master. Because when you go talking about soul business, you're talking about business that God has the final authority. What does God's word say about the struggles of life? What's in the scriptures about struggling and freedom and release from oppression and suppression. Too many times we fail to pray, but I, I want to look at the text and inform us that God hears our prayer. God's ears are always listening and tuned to the cries of his people. Prayer is the believer's method of messaging God. Prayer is the lifeline for the saints as we travel through time into eternity. We communicate with God through prayer and he communicates with us through scripture. The voice of prayer, the value of prayer is visible in the lives of many saints of scripture and saints of old. It's pattern its principles and its practices and its perseverance, even when that seems that God was listening, somebody continued to pray. Prayer is proven. It's unmistakable throughout scripture. It is shown to be efficient and effective when used by the believers of old. Saints, when they couldn't do anything else, they knew how to pray. Sometimes it was a morning prayer, but they knew how to pray. Sometimes it was on the river banks, in the fields, on, while they were scrubbing floors, they knew how to pray. And now that we have been blessed to go from uh, what they call horseback to Cadillac, now we have forgotten the prayer that brought us through. We've been blessed by God tremendously to the point that some of us have failed to recognize the struggle that brought us to where we are now. Prayer, like Samuel, Samuel, a prophet of old, he knew how to go before God. He knew how to communicate with God uh, when he was looking for another king, King Saul. He knew how to continue to communicate with God when God told him to go down to Jesse's house because I have a new king down there. S Samuel knew what it meant to have a prayer life. Elijah knew what it meant to pray to God and ask for rain in a dry spot. Maybe there's someone in your in this listening to this text that's going through a dry spot and there's no rain, there's no there's no blessings from God, there's no favor of God. It seems as if God has not breathed on your situation. Maybe you need to talk to Elijah and ask him, what do I do? And he'll tell you, get on your knees and pray that God will send rain. Daniel prayed. And read Daniel. Chapter 6, verse 10, it says when Daniel knew the writing was on the wall, Daniel went to his room and opened his window toward Jerusalem and knelt down and prayed as he had done a four time. In other words, Daniel teaches us prayer works all the time. Don't just wait until a situation arises when, and then pray. It says Daniel 
had always, I'm paraphrasing, Daniel prayed after the writing, just like he did before the writing. Daniel was not amused and amazed by what was going on in the king's palace because Daniel knew how to get in contact with the king of kings. Daniel's prayer, Elijah's prayer, King David's prayer, Solomon's prayer. Hezekiah knew how to turn his face to the wall. He tell you the prayer works. Nehemiah's prayer before the undertaking and the rebuilding and the revival of a nation. First thing he did is broke down on his knees and prayed and cried. And too many of us don't know how to humble ourselves enough to break down on our knees and fall on our face and get before God. And sometimes prayer will help you get the job done. Sometimes prayer will help you get through what you're going through. Prayer might not necessarily change the situation, but prayer might keep you in control while you're going through the situation. Now, that's Old Testament, New Testament, Peter, John, going to the temple at hour of prayer, meets that man, standing by the uh, temple gate, begging for alms, but the power of prayer and the principle and practice of prayer put them in position to proclaim Jesus Christ to a man at the gate. The church in Acts chapter 12, they prayed for Peter's release. While they were still holding prayer meeting, Peter knocked at the door. I told you prayer works. So I'm suggesting you keep praying. Keep, keep bombarding the throne of God with your petitions. Keep your prayer life up. Many of us as believers can attest to the fact the power of prayer by our parents, church members of old, grandparents, old saints, their prayers kept you while you didn't have sense enough to keep yourself. Anybody in your own home just throw up a hand and witness that some folk prayed for me, had me on their mind. Somebody prayed for me. And because somebody prayed for you and brought you through, it behooved us to bring a generation through, through our prayer. <coughs> so many biblical characters that live the life of prayer. Biblical characters practice prayer and their stories testify of the wonderful works of prayer. A few little principles that I see in the text I want to put before you today. Maybe something of a handle that you can hold on to to give you hope while you're walking through a hurting generation. First of all, when you read text in Exodus, the believers, Exodus is rooted in prayer. Yeah, the believers, Exodus is rooted and grounded in prayer. Look what he says in verse number seven there. The Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows, and I have come down to deliver them. Getting ready to get out of here. That, that, that's enough for somebody to shout. God is getting ready to release you from something that you've been facing. <clears throat> God is getting ready to break the backs of your enemy. And it's all because some folk been praying. Gee, the Lord says to Moses, I've heard them praying. Watch this. One must attest to the fact that even in oppression, even through suppression, that we are still standing. But this text suggests that God hears them. And maybe God is saying to us, when when your problems drive you to your knees, then I'll come check on you. Many of us trying to handle our problem standing up. But I tell you, old saints said it like this. It's hard to stumble when you're on your knees. This situation where oppression, lion's den, fiery furnaces, Abandonment, banishment to Isles of Patmos. All of these things have been experienced by the body of Christ. Watch this. It didn't cause us to commit suicide. It didn't cause us to commit homicide. It didn't cause us to even go at our brothers. One thing 
You know what I'm saying is, before you get to the believer's exodus is rooted in consistent prayer, you need to back up the point I missed. The believer's experiences are sustained through crying out in prayer. One must attest the fact, even in pressure, even through suppression, we are still standing. Through all that we've experienced, we are still standing. This is not our first rodeo. We are still standing. Stop thinking that the end is near for us. If you look throughout history, you're talking about 400 years in this, in this country, and we're still struggling just to be recognized. We're still standing. I don't want to deal with just black history. I want to deal with life in general. You went through a lot of stuff, but the magic word is you went through it, and it's over, and you're still here. You went through surgery, still here. Went through job loss, still here. Went through divorce, still here. Went through life struggles, and you're still standing because you kept crying out to God. That's what I'm trying to get a witness. Thank God we've not jumped off the bridge. We've not jumped off the building. We've not committed a crime against our neighbor, our brothers, nor ourselves. We're not even trying homicide and suicide. And read the text right, early part, chapter 1, King put together a genocide program to try his best to uh, erase out all the male factors in Egypt. Why? Because they saw them growing even under oppression. That's enough to make you want to holler right there. Saw them growing, the male fact. Now, point on me maybe later on, but I need to just say it here while it's on my mind. <coughs> In reality, the enemy don't want you gone. They want you in a subservient role. The reason they don't want you gone but want you in a subservient role, they need you for their existence. They are codependent. They are codependent. You got to look through history. Even in this process here, at the latter part, when you find that God finally breaks the back of Pharaoh, Pharaoh gets thinking after they march down to the Red Sea, he tells his son, y'all go get them. You get those Hebrews. Go bring them back. We need some folk to build our bricks with no straw. We need some folk. And so what I'm trying to say on the economy level, on the lifestyle level, I'm trying to say this to be politically correct. But the fact of it is, people need certain folk for their existence. People need certain folk to make them prosperous. People need certain folk for their goals and their, 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 their gadgets. Look at what's going on in America. Look at Black history. Look at budgets. Look at cash register. Look at cash flow. Look at all of those things that we experience on a daily basis from the people that give us the least respect. But at the same time, they need you. Amen? Now, ex experiences are sustained through prayer. Some of us have to be honest. We went through some situations that the only thing that kept us sane without blowing our top, without losing our cool, without throwing up our hand, is the privilege of knowing how to cry out in prayer. But then, believers, Exodus, he said, I'm getting ready to let you go. It, I'm aware of the fact that we have been here before. That's something that you need to tag. This is not the first time we've been in this situation. This is not the first time that we've had to deal with oppression. This is not the first time that we had to deal with being the last hired, first fired, no, no promotions, but expected to perform. Then they have the tendency to want to bring someone in under you, put them over you, and then you train them how to perform your job. All these you've experienced. Amen? And this is not about church. This is about life. This is about how you function in life. There, this, is our, this is not our first rodeo. What we are experiencing is a last-ditch effort to control and convince God's people 
that they know what's best for us. History repeats itself. You can't allow the enemy. You can't allow the Moses, the pharaohs of life. You can't allow the Egyptians of life. You can't allow the bondage of life, the oppressors of life, to control your destiny. Well, question kind of mind. Are we going back through history? Is it due to a lack of consistent prayer life? <clears throat> Is it due to a lack of follow-up after the prayer meeting? Is there a failure to reserve to persevere and stay the course? Are we somehow derailed and disillusioned by the small things that grasp our attention and lead us away from our destiny? Prayer is work. Prayer empowers us to do the work. Prayer is not the only step. Prayer is a phase in our Christian pilgrimage. Prayer brings on a source, another helper alongside of us called the Holy Spirit that will lead us, guide us, give us revelation on what our next move should be. <coughs> Somebody keep praying. I know it doesn't look good, but keep, keep praying. I know you're wondering about what the next move of the government is, but keep praying. I know you're wondering about going into your job and what's going to be the atmosphere, but keep, keep praying. I know you're concerned about your children, school and ac academics amid a pandemic, and, but you got to keep praying. You, you got to prepare yourself. Once you have prayed, once you've prepared yourself, once you have protected your children, to the best of your ability. Once you have performed your job, your work on your job to the best of your ability, you have to trust God to do that which you are not responsible for. Still here. We've had relatives to fight for a country that disrespected them, disregard them without remorse. 400 years and rolling it. All that stuff we've experienced. But prayer has kept us. Not only that, the believers. Enemies will be conquered through prayer. Prayer will give you the fortitude to address the issues that plague our nation. Let us not assume that prayer is the end of our work. Prayer is simply a phase of the work that is followed by action, integrity, exposure, and perseverance. We must act strategically. We must exercise every right. We must plan intentionally how we will function in life regarding our response from God through our prayer time. The leadership must, must be comprised of a group of committed men and leaders, men and women called by God to be the core ingredient to set things in order. One thing that needs to be said is what we're missing in society now is leadership. We have a decapitated society. No one wants to follow anyone. No one wants to support anyone. And then when you, 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 you when the Christians don't speak up, then we get the carnal concept of leadership. And we see where that has gotten us. We need some committed men of God, men of integrity. And that's why God will call a Moses from the backside of the mountain and let a bush burn in front of Moses to get Moses' attention. He didn't call him from downtown at the state house, at the courthouse. He didn't call him from the legislature, from the Senate. He called a Moses that was on the backside of a mountain being overworked and underpaid. And he tell Moses, I need somebody to go down to Egypt and stand and look Pharaoh in the eye. He said, and I know who I'm calling Moses had all of those excuses, and God had to tell Moses that I can handle all of your excuses, your stammering tongue, your slower speech, but I need someone with integrity to speak to the Pharaoh of life. Now, last one, talk about the believers' enemies will be conquered through prayer. If you have worked on a position, and some days the only thing that kept you same in your cubicle was your prayer life. Sometimes you wanted to deal with matters in your own way. But after praying, God allowed you 
to hold your peace. And then God went to work on your behalf. And that's enough for somebody to say, when God sees that you've done all you can, when God sees that you're praying to keep from getting out of line, and God sees that the enemy is approaching, he says to Moses, I've heard the cries of my people. I've heard and I've seen the struggles. He says, I'm not oblivious to what's going on with the folk. And he tells Moses that I, I, I've heard them and I need somebody to go down and speak on my behalf. I need a holy ambassador to go down and stand and look Pharaoh in the eye. I need Moses to go down and tell Pharaoh, it's time for you to let my people go. And then I want to tell you that Whenever you start praying, not only will that happen, but God will expose the enemy for what they really are. If you just look at our media right now, you'll find out that folk that you voted for, folk that made you promises, they have pulled the cover back. And now you understand that you can trust no one but the Lord. And Moses, you are the one that God has put in position and God has put in place to go down and proclaim, it's time to let my people go. Now, how did this come about? While Moses was on the backside taking care of Jethro's flock, it was some, he was in Midian, and there was some folk down in Egypt. And I, I just wondered, Lord, how did you connect a Moses in Midian with some prayer warriors down in Egypt? And he said, prayer is untrackable untraceable communication between a people and their God. When I was down and had Moses down in Midian and I had the people of God on their knees down in, in the flesh pots of Egypt, somebody down there in the flesh pots of Egypt, Egypt cried out to God and said, Lord, can you see us? Come on and see about us. And the Lord said, your prayer didn't get to Moses, but your prayer got to God, and God prepared Moses because he heard you praying. Every now and then, you ought to find somebody that knows how to get a, a prayer through. That's basically what God said. He said, their prayer made it to the altars of God. And now that their prayer made it to the altars of God, I'm about to get ready to deliver the people of God. That's enough to shout right there. God is getting ready to deliver somebody. Will you let him deliver you? Prayer works. I don't care what you're going through. Prayer puts God in charge. When you don't pray, you basically tell God, I can do it without you. But you got to look at that woman in St. Luke chapter 18. Bible says before he gives the parable of the woman, he said that man ought to always pray and not faint. And then he gives the parable of a woman with her consistent communication while crying to the king. And the king decided that I need to do something because this woman will not stop bothering me. Saints of old said it like this. Push. Pray until something happens. Push. Pray until your child get on straight streets. Push. Pray until your, your, your family gets back together. Push. Pray until your health gets back together. Push. Pray until God shows up and delivers you out of a situation. Prayer works. Prayer preserves. I, Daniel wouldn't sleep at night with lions all around. But prayer to preserve. The reason I say that is because it wasn't that the, that the lions weren't hungry. <clears throat> they just didn't want Daniel. Daniel was not on their menu. If you read the text right, when they took Daniel out of the lion's den and threw his accuser in the lion's den, then the lions went to work on his accuser. See, sometimes prayer, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost, preserve you, but prayer positions you to step back and let God handle your enemy. Many of us get it little uneasy about this time of year. Riding down the road, you, you, you see how you've been treated as a people. But this is the moment when you pray, God, will you handle my haters? Handle my enemy. 
Now, if you let God handle them, see, he know how to take care. Because if you don't let God handle them, then you become as bad as your enemies. Moses didn't have to swing a blow. All Moses had to do was speak. And the reason Moses was in his position is because God heard the prayers and saw the tears and the sorrow and the oppression of his people. Not only that, God hears you. He hears us so much that he sent his son Jesus to deliver us. He sent his son Jesus because he hears the sinner's cry. If you are a sinner, he'll hear your cry. If you're struggling, he'll hear your cry. Right now, we want you to bow your head. God, we thank you. We're praying for this, this body of believers. We're praying for the ears and the hearts of the people that have heard your word. We pray now that you give strength to the, to the saints. You give salvation to the sinner. That we may continue to serve you and one day see you first. Faith. Thank you that we know that prayer still works. It's in Jesus' name. We trust in God and we're going to keep praying. All the people say, Amen.